Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all to our service online on this, the third Sunday before Advent, also, of course, Remembrance Sunday. Very warm welcome to you wherever you're joining us from. We begin our service with the hymn For the Fruits of All Creation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, to remember those who have suffered in conflict war and terror, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong, and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all. Govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is read for us by Rosemary. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths, and meets them in every thought. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Gospel reading this morning is read for us by Christine. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridegrooms bridesmaids came also saying Lord Lord open to us but he replied truly I tell you I do not know you keep awake therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour this is the gospel of the Lord And at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a horrible feeling dozing off and then being woken unexpectedly. As a parent, I know that, although Claire would say that I don't know that feeling very well. She has a point. It was fairly rare that I seemed to be the one that woke up. It's not my fault that I sleep so deeply. But like the amazing mum that she is, she has the knack, rather like a dog, of sleeping with one ear still open. But nonetheless, all of us at some time or other will have woken up with a jolt and sat bolt upright and of course it happens in all sorts of circumstances. The expected and unexpected is the whole thrust of the parable we've just heard in the Gospel. It speaks of the need to be not just prepared, but expectant. Expectant for the coming of the Kingdom of Heaven and the coming of the Son of Man. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour, our reading urges. So we know neither the day nor the hour of the kingdom of heaven. In this life, we're caught in a time of what might be described as now and not yet. The kingdom is known to us, but are we known to it? Today, especially as we remember the devastation of war, and the loss of life that it brings, we remember too that war and tragedy are pointers to the broken world in which we live. That is the not yet of the kingdom. War and violence are the symptoms of the disease of human willfulness and inattentiveness to the ways of Jesus Christ, the bridegroom who comes. The question we have to ask ourselves 
is whether we are expectant for the coming of Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, or not. But the bridesmaids, the bridesmaids don't just receive the bridegroom, they walk with him, they herald his path and proclaim his presence. In a world all too visibly marred by war and violence, as well as the deep sadness and worry that comes with the second lockdown, we have to work all the harder to receive, herald and illuminate the way of Jesus Christ, expectant for his coming kingdom. Essential to Christian discipleship is an expectant focus on the bridegroom. The kick in this morning's gospel story is that the church has a lot of people in it who haven't yet grasped their role and are missing the point of the whole enterprise. When the moment for action arrives, they can't function. Have we as a church got what it takes to be expectant, to be a gospel community, constantly extending an invitation into the joy of God? Are we expectant, confident in the peace and justice the bridegroom brings, ready to herald and embrace him? Is your lamp ready? Is it full of oil to be set on fire to escort the bridegroom? There is great urgency in getting the oil into our lamp. And there are many sources from which we can draw this oil. There are deep wells that the church gives us to draw from. And I want to sketch out just three of them. Firstly, scripture itself. As we read the Gospels and throughout the Bible, there are pointers to keeping us alert, open to God and ready to build his kingdom. We always have this seductive voice whispering, just as the serpent in the garden, whispering to us that we need not be ready for God, but to look after our own concerns instead. That voice whispers complacency into our ears. It whispers that we will not die. Whereas Christ speaks to us of being alert and open to the ways of God. He speaks to us of life in him and not a life that is self-interested. So by the scriptures, we replenish our stocks of oil. Secondly, there are the sacraments of the church that hold out to us great reserves of strength. As we think of oil in our lamps, we might be mindful that it is no coincidence that the beginning of any Christian ministry is marked by the sign of the cross in oil upon our heads. The anointing oil gives us grace at our baptism to live the Christian life as it also does at confirmation and so too at ordination. Even as our mortal bodies fade towards death, we can be anointed with oil to prepare us for new life. And so too, we are restocked with oil as we make our peace with God, just as we have done earlier in this service today, as we confess our sins and receive his forgiveness. And then thirdly, there is prayer to sustain us. Prayer that asks for the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit is a way to keep us ever expectant. In our prayer, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to examine our lives, to help us to see the ways in which we fall short and the ways in which we can be built up. Pray without ceasing, St. Paul tells us, even now, as we are only open for private worship and our services must be online in our homes again and for the coming weeks. Even now, we can pray without ceasing. And that is what we're being urged to do by the Archbishops of Canterbury and York. To make November a month of fervent prayer. To use the time of the lockdown 
to pray hard and pray often. It sounds a circular argument, but not so with God, that if we pray without ceasing, then our oil, oil stocks are always full. And if our oil stocks are full, then we will pray without ceasing. Because then we will become men and women open to the ways of God, always watchful, alert and expectant. That is what unceasing prayer means. At midnight there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. The bridegroom comes, have your lamp full of oil and ready for him. Go out and meet him, stay close to him, shed light on the moments of his arrival in life so that others may greet him and know him too. Draw people's attention to his risen presence among us as the heart and focus of our celebration of God's mercy and love. Be expectant. Go and meet the bridegroom and make him known to others. Together, let us affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our virtual choir sing the anthem, I heard a voice from heaven. The words coming from the 13th verse of the 14th chapter of the book of Revelation, set to the music of John Goss.
Our prayers this morning are led for us by Celia. Let us pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For civilian men, women, children, whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatred of humanity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who bear the burden and privilege of public office and influence, for our political, military and religious leaders, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray together in the words our Saviour gave us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Receive this sign of peace. We sing the hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
let us pray. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.